Hey, it's Ryan with this week's Mille Lacs Fishing Report. Good fishing continues out here on Mille Lacs. Uh, we're approaching the end of July right now. We are experiencing beautiful weather out on the main lake. It's, uh, it's been really nice. Cooled down a little bit the last couple days. Uh, that hasn't changed the fishing at all. I don't expect to see any major changes in the fishing over the next couple weeks here. A lot of times by mid-August we'll see some changes as far as fish coming back up shallow again, but I don't expect to see that anytime soon. Starting off with the musky bite, not much has changed. The musky bite is still that deep weed line bite if you're out casting. What I would tell a person to go do right now is throw bigger bucktails. A lot of times the double tens like a cowgirl, something along those lines is a great choice this time of year. If you can stick it, you know, try burning it. That's a great way to provoke a reaction strike out of a fish. A lot of times what I tell guys is if you can run the bigger baits fast, do it. Those will definitely attract more fish and larger fish. If it's a little too much for you, what I would tell you to do is go to a smaller bait. A lot of times a number eight musky marabou made by MEPS is another good option this time of year. What I would tell a person to do as far as colors go is on a bright day, stick with bright colors. On a cloudy day, go with more darker colors. I wouldn't get too much more complicated than that, but I would try to burn those baits, run them fast, and try to get a reaction strike out of fish. Moving on to the walleye bite, definitely midsummer walleye pattern out here. There's guys still catching some fish up a little shallower. When I tend to notice that is when it's overcast or windy or in the morning or evening. If you're gonna go for the shallower fish around the shorelines, what I'd recommend to a person is a bobber and a leech in the morning and evening. That's gonna be your by far your best shot. By shallow, I mean that 17 to uh, 18, 24 foot range, somewhere in there. That's kinda gonna be the shallower end this time of year. You may find fish even shallower than that, but I would say that 18 to 24 foot range. If you can find a transition where it turns from rock to gravel, that's gonna be a great, a great place to be over the next month here. For guys that are out fishing during the day or just a more consistent bite all around is going to be the mud flats or the gravel bars. During the daytime, especially if you have calmer conditions, I would stick to the edges. You know, the edges of the flats are gonna be that 28, 20, 32 foot range. The edges of the gravel bars are gonna be similar. But a couple ways of fishing those are going to be either bobbers and leeches, power corking, where you drive around in your boat, try to mark some fish, and then throw your bobbers right out behind the boat on top of them. Or another great method this time of year is to pull out lead core. And the reason lead core works so well this time of year is kind of twofold. One, you're covering a lot of water very quickly, trying to find active, aggressive fish. Number two, you're bringing little baits down deep. And the reason you're doing that is because early in the spring, the young of the year fish are from the spring of last year. So they're getting to be pretty sizable. When you get to July, the young of the year fish are from this year. And so they're gonna be very small, fry to you know just a couple inch size. So you're trying to use lead core to bring those little baits down deep into deeper water and it more closely mimics the fish that the walleyes are now seeing pull off of the shorelines and move out into the deeper basin. When trolling lead core, great speed to go is two to two and a half miles an hour. What I would recommend to you more than a specific speed itself is trying to keep a maintain a consistent speed. And the reason being is lead core sinks. So as you speed up, it's going to lift up off the bottom. As you slow down, it's going to sink back down towards the bottom. So maintaining a consistent speed and a consistent direction is going to really help you dial in the depth at which you're getting the most bites. What you'll notice on your graph is when you're while you're fishing lead core is you're going to see fish that are suspended a couple feet up off of the bottom. So what you want to do is try to keep your baits above their heads. If you see fish two feet off the bottom, I'd try to keep your baits five feet off the bottom. You're keeping your baits just above their head. Their eyes are looking up. They're looking for minnows and little fry that are up above them. So you don't want to be right on the bottom with lead core here. You want to be up a few feet above the fish. As far as colors of baits with lead core, what I would say is perch patterns, whites, and something chrome. Um, I don't get too wound up about colors when it comes to crankbaits. I just like to do a few basic 
color combinations and that's stuff with white bellies stuff that has chrome on it and also stuff that has orange bellies i kind of call those the perch colors but any one of those three and smaller baits like a number five shad wrap a number four salmo hornet a small flicker shad any of those baits will work well this time of year moving on to the smallmouth bite smallmouth bite remains pretty good midsummer pattern with those as well uh, things are just very typical for this time of year. A lot of the fish I've been finding are not so much depth related, but definitely more structure related. What I'd recommend to a person is instead of looking for fish at a certain depth, because I've been finding them anywhere from 5, 6 feet all the way up to 25, 26 feet, what I would do is look for more of a specific kind of structure. And specifically large rocks and boulders. So whether it be a, a spine or a point with large rocks and boulders on it, isolated boulders, or possibly a drop-off that has large rock or boulder on it, whatever it may be, I would look for that instead of trying to look for fish at a specific depth. When I find fish, I've been targeting them a couple different ways. And one is more bottom related and one is more top water related. So the way I kind of break it down is generally I'm going to be fishing with them more bottom related, be it tubes, drop shots, um, maybe swim baits swam very close to the bottom, and Ned Rigs, definitely the Ned Rigs. They're always a consistent producer this time of year, but all of those tend to be more bottom related baits. And I'll fish those on windy days, I'll fish those midday, I'll kind of fish those all the time. But every once in a while this time of year you run into a period of times where things tend to change up on you. And you'll see that in the mornings and evenings. You'll also see that on bright sunny days where it's flat calm out. And the smallies will be surfacing out here. They'll be coming up, they're eating bugs, they're chasing the little minnow fry on top. And you can try throwing top waters at them. Sometimes they go for it, but sometimes they don't. So when you're faced with these conditions where they're not really eating baits on the bottom, they're not really eating baits on the top, but you see that fish are actively feeding, be it morning, evening, or flat calm conditions, what I would pull out is the spy bait. And what I like to do with those is cast them out and reel them in just a nice consistent steady pace. Don't do anything funny with them, don't try to twitch them or, or do anything different with them. Just cast them out. You can either bring them in just below the surface or you can let them sink down a little ways and bring them in kind of through the mid depth. But uh, the spy bait kind of fills the gaps when nothing else is working for you this time of year. Hey, the good fishing's gonna continue. We have beautiful weather in the long-term forecast. So have a great weekend and good luck fishing.